Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 32. In this tutorial we are going to take a look at loading the game that we have saved, uh, which means us modifying a couple of little things here and there and we're also going to create a credit scene. Don't forget to click on subscribe button and click on that bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial that I upload to my channel on video game development. With that in mind, let's get to work. So, firstly, what I would like to do before we go uh, any further into what we have here, uh, because we've started dealing with more flaws now, there are certain scripts that do need a little bit more modification, uh, specifically the one which recycles our scenes, i.e. if we die, we need to go to the correct floor instead of going to the one that we already set it as. So, let's go to our stats folder and go on to recycle level. By default, it'll always come back to floor 001, which is scene number two, I think it was. I'm sure it was. Yeah, so scene two. So we need to add in a little something else here to make sure that this actually works correctly. So because we always have um, the level in the global complete script, we're able to use that. However, that global complete script only kicks in once we hit floor two. So for now, the best thing for us to do is keep this line in here, but set an if statement to check if we're on floor one or if we're not. So to do that, after the else, we need to go if, and in brackets, global complete dot next floor, equals 4, which is by default, if you recall, then what we need to do is place this line of code in that if statement. So basically what we're saying is if we're starting the game fresh and we die on the first floor, it will still reload us back into that scene. We now need an else statement. So we're saying if we're on floor 1 or if we're not, then do the following. So the else statement is going to be scene manager .load scene, and instead of the number two, we put global complete dot next floor and close bracket semicolon, and then below it close curly bracket close curly bracket <laughs> should say to finish up that if statement and save the script, and that is that sorted. So whenever we die on whatever floor number we're on now, we will respawn on the correct um, floor rather than the same one over and over again. So next thing we we need to do is to load our game, and that's actually real simple. So last tutorial, if you remember, we started dealing with uh, this right here, the player prefs. So we set integers for scene to load, live saved, score saved, and ammo saved. And if I go back into Unity, and I'm just going to let that script compile, the one that we modified a minute ago. And come on, Unity. There. Yeah. No. There we go. That took a while. Uh, so let's head to our scenes folder and go to the main menu. So on here, if you remember, in the menu controls, um, we have a way of controlling the buttons that we have. And the reset game was set the integers back to zero. So obviously we now need to do something to load the game. And we have to be a little bit clever with this one because we can actually use these two methods, the new game and new game routine. So I'm actually going to copy both of those methods and head below the reset game. And where we have start coroutine new game routine, I'm going to go load game routine. We'll change the method name to load game and the coroutine also to load game routine. So now everything should play out as normal. What we have to do at this point is we now have to load the uh, integers that we have set from our save file because currently the C manager will always load two. But if you recall in global complete, uh, once we get to the end of floor complete, we'll be able to save what that next floor is. So we need to set that integer as whatever is in the player pref. So back in main menu, what we'll do is when we click that coroutine, we will go player prefs and in bracket, oops, not we've got actually loading, don't we? Uh, set uh, integer. 
Uh, so I'm trying to think. Oh, I don't know why I said set. I meant get. <laughs> get int. And in brackets, uh, the first one, which is going to be scene two. In fact, I'm actually going to copy that just so there's no spelling mistakes like so. Now, what we have to do at this point is we have to recall um, an actual um, variable to actually load this into. So what we need to do is at the top, let's have public int and we'll have this as load scene semicolon and then public int load uh, lives and I'm sure you can guess where we're going with this one public int load score and finally public int load ammo semicolon now that means that we can now set that load scene into that from that player pref so load scene equals player prefs dot get int scene to load so using that same method we can actually use load lives to do the exact same thing so load lives equals player prefs dot get int and in brackets and quotes the name of that player pref and once again i'm going to copy and paste it just so as i know there's no spelling mistakes then load score don't know why I auto filled that one load score equals player prefs dot get int and in brackets score saved right there and then finally uh, load ammo equals player prefs dot get int and then in brackets and quotes that final one so now we have set whatever is saved in those player prefs into these variables so we can use that to our advantage now because we can say uh, the load scene should be right there so scene manager load scene and in here we can put load scene so it will load whatever scene number we have but at the same time we also have to set um, certain variables within the um, the actual thing itself and what we're going to have to do in a very clever way is set this variable right here back on that main menu so we also have to set it there rather than just have it in the main menu simply because we wouldn't be able to load the scene otherwise if we complete that one so what we'll say is global uh, complete dot next floor equals load scene semicolon then obviously we've also got to set our lives so global uh, life dot uh, which variable is it i think it's life value that's the one equals load lives semicolon and global score dot let's find it in there score value equals uh, load score semicolon and finally global ammo that one right there equals uh, load oops i actually forgot to set that on global ammo dot handgun ammo equals load ammo semicolon and save so that's it we've managed to write a couple of lines of code which allow us to load any saved data that we have stored from completing the game previously. So if I go back into Unity and set that button active to that method that we wrote, so canvas, uh, panel, load button, let's click on plus, drag across menu controls, no function, main menu control, and change it to load game. And I'm gonna save the scene. So I'm going to make sure all of this works correctly now. So I'm going to spend uh, about a minute going on new game and playing up our game and then getting to scene two, quitting and then loading it. There we go. So let's get some ammo. Let's keep going. 
Okay. Ooh. I'm gonna shoot this guy right here. Oh. Take that. Um, is it worth killing anyone else? I don't think so. I love that got noise. Okay, so we've got to here and it has now saved for us. Because as soon as this scene, this little uh, bit loads, it has already saved that scene. If you remember, we coded it to be that way. So now we're on floor two. Once, uh, there we go. So let's say we've quit the game, no problem. And let's load up our menu. And let's load the game. Perfect. As you can see, ammo is the same. Floor, score, lives. Perfect. So, that is how we can load our game. Now, I did say we we're going to do a credit scene in this uh, tutorial, so let's get to that. Uh, it's actually, there's loads of different ways of doing a credit scene, and um, I guess it's really up to you how you do it. Uh, build settings, it was credits, wasn't it? So that is scene number four. So let's head to scene and credits. Now I'm just going to do a real quick, simple credit scene here. Uh, so game object, UI and raw image. Let's stretch that uh, all the way. And zero, 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 zero. Let's have the color as black. And the way it's basically done is you can just use an animation, really. Uh, go into UI, go to text, and let's have that text centered perfectly. I'm going to have it as white, and um, I'll have it a little bit bigger in font, I guess. Let's have it as 26, and let's increase the size of the area. Now, credit usually scroll bottom to top and once again I guess it's entirely up to you how you want to do it um, let's just say designer Jimmy Vegas because why not artist Jimmy Vegas obviously you can go a lot more intricate with this and take more time to do things uh, programmer um, Jimmy <laughs> Vegas um, concept not Jimmy Vegas so you see you see the whole point here so we've created a list of the credits so let's get that into position maybe have it centered because why not so somewhere down here and like I said the way it's done is just through animation in its quickest and simplest terms so let's go to the animation uh, let's click on create and we'll say cred scroll save press the record button and let's start recording that animation so keyframe uh, the very first one we're going to do this all on the uh, just one axis as you can see on the y position so set that y position i guess below your screen and then we'll say after 10 seconds which would be 600 frames we want the credits to finish up somewhere up here and uh, stop that recording and let's do uh, the cred scroll on there and untick loop time and now I'm going to create a quick script which will take us back to the main menu after those 10 seconds so let's go to our scripts folder and right click create C sharp script and cred to menu let's open that up in Visual Studio as always when Unity decides it wants to so this is going to be done once again through a coroutine. So we can get rid of update, start, and we'll have, in start I should say, we'll have start coroutine, and I'm just going to call this back to menu. Open close bracket, close bracket semicolon, and let's create that coroutine. I enumerator back to menu, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and we'll say yield, return new, wait for seconds. And I'll just do 11, just to give it a bit more time. And then we will add the namespace for scene manager. So using unity engine dot scene management, semicolon. And scene manager dot load scene. And I think, it, is it scene one? Is it? Let me check. 
file, build settings. It is not, it's scene three. So we don't need to worry about anything else in here because it's always going to be the same scene that we end up going back to. So let's save that script, head back into Unity. And it's compiling. And let's go on game object, create empty, and drag and drop, cred to menu onto there, and save the scene. Now let's test all of this out. So let's head to our scenes. Let's go to main menu, and let's press play from here. And let's go on to credits. Oh, we've not actually written that code, have we? I always get ahead of myself. Always get ahead of myself. Let's actually write the uh, few lines, take ourselves to the credits. So let's say uh, public void credit button, oh, close bracket, and open curly bracket, and scene manager dot load scene. Let's quickly check what the credits is. I think it's four. I think it's four. It is four. So again, that scene will always be static. It will never change. So that's fine. And then let's set that credits button into place with the script. And let's go to panel and credit button. Click on plus, click on menu controls, no function, main menu and a credit button. Save, play, and let's try this out. There we go, there's our scrolling credits. Awesome. And now we should go back to the main menu. Perfect. So that is the end of that tutorial. Next time, what we're going to do is going to be the last tutorial, the next one. We're going to take a look at some uh, final settings for the game. Um, we're going to take a quick review over a couple of things and make sure everything works as intended. Uh, we'll build the game into an executable uh, file that you can upload and anyone can play. And we'll also have a quick talk about where to go from here. So until that next tutorial, like I say, which will be the last one, see you guys around.